Welcome everyone to the HAL podcast where we feature guests from various backgrounds with captivating stories to tell. And our goal is to bring people together by sharing diverse perspectives and experiences while also empowering and amplifying underrepresented voices to inspire positive change in the world. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Howling Gale Entertainment and please give us a rating on Spotify at the Howl Podcast. And I'm your host today, Juan Raimundo Ramos, and the next guest today is Benito Bautista, an award-winning filmmaker who founded Wonderless Project Films in 2001. He's been making films together with his producing partner, Emma Francisco, and he's also the executive director of the San Diego Filipino Cinema, which is the presenter of the San Diego Filipino Film Festival, home of the largest curation of global Filipino films in the United States. And we're super excited to hear more about Benito's journey, as well as his role as executive director of the San Diego Filipino Film Festival. And I'm super excited to be sharing that with the world. And it'll be on October 3rd to 8th. So please be there. And without further ado, please welcome Benito Bautista. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for a very warm introduction. Uh, And thank you for having me, uh, Juan. Absolutely. Super honored to have you here and also all the listeners who are part of the festival as well. And I'm super excited to promote it. But before we begin, let's uh, go ahead and just introduce yourself to uh, the listeners out there and also your background, too. Yes. So I'm Benita Bautista. I'm an independent uh, writer, director, producer. And like what you one mentioned, uh, my partner in film producing is my wife, Emma Francisco, and I am the executive director and co-founder of San Diego Filipino Cinema, presenter of San Diego uh, um, Filipino Film Festival, the largest uh, uh, curator and exhibitor of global Filipino films. And um, we are also in partnership in, uh, together with Emma uh, with Wanderlust Project Films, uh, uh, making films in the United States and outside of the United States. Absolutely. And I'm super excited to hear more about that. Um, can you share with our listeners a little bit about your personal journey into the world of filmmaking? Like what you got, what got you started in, I guess, making movies? Oh, uh, that's, that's a very good question. And, and every time, every time that question is asked, I, it always brings me to the very beginning of, and then sometimes, you know, the very beginning is something that you'd never really you never really thought of, you know, until you're asked, you know? And so those are important things that I kind of want to remember again, every time a question is asked like that. So I, 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 I didn't wake up, you know, uh, thinking that I'm going to be a writer, director, producer. That was not, that was not the case. I grew up in a family of doctors, my mom and dad, they're doctors, my sister, my brother, my uncle, my auntie, my cousins, they're all doctors. And so Early on, the script that was given to me was that if somebody asked me while I was growing up uh, what I would do when I grow up, what would I become when I grow up? The answer is always, I want to be a doctor. That was that was just the case. Right. And only until until about maybe third year high school, maybe senior high school, um, my system, my internal system kind of rebelled. You know, because it it seemed like it was not me, you know, because uh, er, when I was young, I was always left with my granddad uh, and, and, and they have a my granddad is uh, retired at the time and they have a little orchard, you know, and so they would leave me with my siblings sometimes, sometimes by myself with my granddad, and my grandmother and. Uh, my granddad's a storyteller and I would listen after lunch, after adobo. <laughs> and I would walk with my granddad behind the orchard or sometimes around the orchard. And he will tell me stories of so many different things about fist fights, about uh, 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 what they call it, experiencing the, the war, you know, and, and, about challenges of uh, people during the war and also about a uh, uh, political climate in, in, in the Philippines, a changing political climate in the Philippines. So I've learned, I've learned so much from my granddad because 
and I fell in love with the storytelling because my granddad was telling me stories and I could really imagine it while sitting down and looking up uh, and I could I could see the the mango leaves and the sun piercing through um it was something that's very romantic to me because there was no visual there was no written word it was just my granddad telling me stories like uh, it's coming from a radio but i can clearly imagine it and i fell in love with that uh, and then and then my granddad and my, and my dad uh, uh, realized that i love to draw so he he initiated by giving me a uh, 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 oil pastel and oil and acrylic and charcoal. And I, I, I basically became a self, uh, a thought artist at a very young age. And before I know it, I was, my dad would bring me to contests in competitions in, in different places. And, uh, you know, fortunately I was beginning to win. And so I fell in love with the visual of it and the storytelling. And that was just the, I think the very beginning and, and then sitting around in the family dinners, I realized that my, my family, they're all storytellers. My dad is a storyteller. My, my mom's a storyteller, you know? Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it, if, if, if I tell you the stories that I've, I've learned from them, some of the stories that I've learned from them, I was able to translate it into film, into screenplays, you know, and that was really wonderful. Now, uh, Again, on hindsight, before I had no idea that that was something that will manifest itself. How many how many years um, later? And then, yeah, when I got to America, I realized that I love cinema because I, w- when I was in the Philippines, I was watching master filmmakers like Lino Broca, you know, Ishmael Bernal, Mike De Leon. I was watching them aside from watching international films like German films and Argentinian films and, and some of the independent uh, 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 filmmakers in, in the Philippines, like Raymond Red, you know, you know, all those things. And yeah. Uh, so when I got to America, the, the idea of film uh, and, and watching movies expanded expanded even more and so the more i realized that i am so in love with the cinema and and then that's that's when the journey started you know studying cinema and and really and really practicing it and and working in the in the film industry so yeah Thank you so much for sharing that, Benito. I'm always curious to see like where people started, right, in the world of cinemas, etc. Um, tell us a little bit more about the production company, uh, Wonderlust Films, like, and also its mission and philosophy when it comes to filmmaking. And I heard you started in 2001, right? Yes. So, so Emma and I, we worked in the American uh, film industry and in independent, and also in other mini majors, and so we worked. We've worked in different capacities. You know, I've worked as a field sound recordist. I've worked as a cinematographer. I worked as a, a production designer, a lighting designer. I worked as grip, as PAs in big, in big uh, productions. And uh, Emma and I, we've learned so much by working in independent film industry. You know, and um, we realized that sometime. Sometime in 2000, um, I think 2006, we decided to really venture off and really create our stories that will represent us, you know? And there's not a lot of it. There's not a lot of it. So uh, it, we were fortunate enough to, to have followers and people that believed in the stories we tell and and that kind of started the Wanderlust Project Films. Our mission was really to work with diverse creatives, not only in America, but also outside of America, in the Philippines and any parts of the world. And, but continue to, to amplify the representation and the design and the perspective 
you know, of a Filipino writer, director, producer, you know, so, and that's us. And so that's something that we are continuing, continuing to do and, and we're proud to be doing. So, yeah. And that's amazing. After 21 years, you're still doing the same mission and philosophy. And I'm very proud of you uh, for that. And I love love your mission statement as well. And tell us a little bit about the projects you've been doing with Wonderlust. Have you been doing like narrative stuff, um, drama, et cetera? So, yeah, that's a, again, that's a very good question. So we're, we're kind of all over the place, you know, because we just love stories and you know, we always find uh, stories to have a dictate of its own in terms of format and genre. So sometimes the stories will come from people we know. Sometimes the stories will come from our producers and executive producers, or sometimes it will come from our own research. And so those stories will actually initiate the kind of format that we are going to tell or express the, the the story. So it might be a documentary or narrative, and it now will venture into a, a, a crime thriller or a romantic crime thriller or, a, 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 you know, a character driven documentary, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, um, uh, that's, that's basically how we work in Wanderlust Project Films. And, and, and now we recently had a film, it's a Japanese American film we shot in Tokyo. I, I don't know if you've seen it, seen the film. Yeah. You've never seen the film. It's now on Amazon. It's called The Interpreter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and when you go, The Interpreter by Benita Bautista. So we shot that in, in Japan, you know, um, and, uh, we got a hold of a story that is, uh, somehow, uh, 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 what do you call that? Um, hidden. H- the story is kind of hidden. I think maybe because it might, it might, uh, disturb the harmony that is in a Japanese culture, but we, we dug deeper, deeper and we rewrote the narrative. That one, and that one we presented it at the time when when the voice of abusive men is really predominant in our system in our society and we wanted we wanted to say it and and we wanted it to become a sort of a, a love triangle but it but at the same time a thriller you know so that one that one yeah that one's a, it's a japanese american film now what's interesting about that is our actor, our lead actor, our lead actress is a, is an award-winning Japanese actress, Kumi Takeuchi. Take, Kumi Takeuchi is actually the face of uh, Amazon Japan. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And so our lead actor at the time, Emma and I were looking for a Japanese actor. While we're here, we're actually virtually looking and then we're going to interview and open casting for that one. Um, um, but uh, uh, we were approached by a Filipino American here in San Diego. Uh, and he said that he wanted to be in film. He wanted to be an actor. So what's interesting about that is uh, um, I saw him and am I die? We go, whoa, he looks Japanese, but he's Filipino. So that's what's amazing about it. So my first question was, but have you ever acted in film? And he said, no, I've never, I've never done film, but I know that I can be, I can be in film, you know, just, a. I don't, I don't want to say arrogance, but it's the bravery, a very brave, a very brave soul to approach me and say, you want to work in film. And I think, and, and yeah, this might be his opportunity. And I told him though, okay, so you've never worked in film, but he's worked in, in theater, you know, when he was young. So I said, okay, but we're looking for a Japanese actor that actually speaks Japanese. And he said, well, I speak fluent Japanese and I, and I write and I read uh, fluent Japanese. And I go, really? Wow. That's interesting. And so I tested him right there and it, and he really sounded Japanese. I, I didn't know if he was telling me 
the, the you know the truth but he really sounded japanese so I, I we gave him a chance i i told him that i wanted to i wanted to see if we can work something out and do a workshop so we did a couple of days workshop i told him that the workshop is geared for for developing the character and I, I gave him some notes and I gave him some homework. And I, in a couple of days, I told him that I want to work with him. I told him that there's no guarantee. If he, if he failed, you know, during the two uh, uh, days of workshops, <clears throat> he will lose the, he will lose the, you know, audition mm-hmm. and he will lose the role. He's not, he's not cut for that one, but he actually, he, he, you know, he kept up. He was really good and we were impressed. So I gave him about a month of our workshops until to really, to really bring him up to par because he will be working with an award-winning Japanese actress, you know, in this film. So, and also an amazing actor from Japan. So, wow. yeah. Um, so anyway, long story short, we were in Japan working with, with all Japanese crew, you know, and I have uh, my own in, uh, translator for the crew and another translator for the cast. Wow. And yeah, and when the film was done, he was, uh, we showed it in, in a focus group uh, composed of, uh, you know, diverse audiences and also Japanese, mm-hmm. Japanese uh, audiences. And they really thought he was Japanese. And they even thought that I was Japanese. <laughs> they thought I was Japanese. I mean, I could, because I was able to create something that's authentic and naturalized in that setting. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, he was nominated best actor. Wow. Congrats. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's insane. Yeah? yeah. And then, yeah. So, and then now we, we just recently uh, uh, shot the last leg of our feature documentary in Palawan. It will kick in in uh, post production uh, uh, anytime soon, and then we are also in development of a uh, feature narrative, uh, a horror film, an American horror film. Yeah, it will be shot uh, uh, somewhere in the south and in the Philippines, and we are about to produce a, a romantic comedy feature in the Philippines and a little bit portion of in 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 in, in California. Yeah, and then the other one is a a dramatic crime uh, thriller that is now in uh, in the very initial stage of development because the American horror film is is already set. We are we are yeah we're excited about that. We are about to do hopefully do pre sale for that one. Yeah. Nice. Very exciting stuff. And for people who want to learn more about the projects that Wonderlust uh, Films have been doing, like where can people find you? Like, do you have a website, uh, social media, et cetera? Yes. So uh, we have, we have a website. It's a uh, www.wonderlustprojectfilms.com. W-A-N-D-E-R-L-E-S-T projectfilms.com. And uh yeah you can you can either email us um or email emma or you can find us on uh um, ig uh i'm uh b3 and ito benito bautista b3 and ito bautista b-a-u-t-i-s-t-a emma francisco is emma francisco that's uh, ig and you can you can connect with us oh we'd love to hear we'd love to hear uh uh uh, uh, possibilities of uh, creative collaboration and we also are interested in learning about st- uh, uh, stories that maybe we can help you know the filmmaker with you know or if we don't have the bandwidth for it we will uh, direct you to the right person that can probably help you you know so yeah yeah so yeah we're, we're, we're always excited about the, the process of uh, cinema and we always believe that any film or any story that means that really is meant to be made will be made. It might take some time, mm-hmm. but it will be made. And people, it will, it will, yeah, touch the hearts of uh, people. 
you know, when the film's done. So uh, I really hope so. And that's amazing. Congratulations on your company. And also people who want to learn more about um, Wanderlust Project Films, please check out their website and also their social media. Thank you so much, Benita, for sharing all that. And I'm excited to uh, also one day see that uh, Japanese film as well. Oh, so. yeah, I, I will. I will text you the <laughs> after the this. Amazon. There you go. Yeah, man. I will let you know. Yeah. The interpreter. Absolutely. Yeah. The interpreter. Yeah. Perfect. So now we're going to dive into the main topic for today, which is promoting the upcoming festival, the 2023 San Diego Filipino Film Festival. And I remember going last year and I was very impressed with all the films that were submitted and shown there. And also the amount of talent, the amount of Filipino talent and filmmakers and artistry that were also um, even just supporting, right? Like not necessarily um, part of it, but also like you can see the sense of community and, you know, everyone just trying to, you know, lift each other up, which is an amazing thing. Tell us a little bit about the history of the San Diego Filipino Fils Film Festival and yeah. um, tell us from it, from its inception and how it is today. Yes. So uh, again, uh, all, all of it, uh, you know, uh, all of it is, I think, a result of uh, uh, it's a cause and effect. It's a result of us being independent filmmakers. And am I and I, fortunately for us, like we said, we we've traveled because of the films we've made. We've learned and we've grown from different diverse creative collaborations. And we've learned so much, you know, everywhere uh, under different directors and other and also other creative collaborators in different departments under us. Now, aside from that, we also learned so much, uh, but, you know, through the presentations of the films we've made because of the dialogue and the exchange of ideas between the audience and us, between interviewers like you and us, we've learned. And we've also learned from uh, experiencing film festivals, important film festivals. And Emma and I, every time we go to a film festival, we're excited to see Filipino films, of course. We're excited to see other films, but we're excited to see Filipino films. We wanted to see how our uh, uh, other film, uh, the, the other filmmakers of Filipino descent are creating their own stories, their own perspectives, you know, and their voice and their design. And we're interested in knowing that. And then somehow, somehow, you, with that exposure, we we realize that uh, we always see maybe four Filipino films in a in an international film festival or in an Asian film festival, and, and it's not it's not to discredit the international film festivals or the Asian film festivals, but am I and I? believe that that's not the indication of how prolific we are as artists. And, and I wanted, am I, and I, we wanted to kind of amplify the representation so that we can now, uh, we can now be so visible because we've been invisible for a long time. And so we wanted that, but we wanted that in a big way, you know? So we wanted, we don't want to just participate. We want to be able to create a platform for all of us, you know, for all of us globally, globally, you know, and, and so that was the idea. So we, we nurtured that idea from San Francisco all the way when we moved to, to San Diego in 2015. So we were here in San Diego and we started exploring that idea, nurturing that idea. And then all of a sudden, we got a call from Dr. Ben, the president, Dr. Ben Camacho, the president of the San Diego Filipino Cinema. And it's like reading our mind. He was like reading our mind, called me up at 7.30 in the morning and said, hey, Benito, I need to talk to you. We've been friends with Dr. Ben Camacho because he's one of the sponsors of one of our films, you know, when we had a, a film screening here at the San Diego Asian Film Festival. And we got to become friends. And he called us up and said, hey, Benito, uh, why don't we start a film festival, a Filipino film festival? And I told Dr. Ben, Dr. Ben, it's like you heard our voices, you know. <laughs> That's exactly what we wanted to do. 
but we we needed we needed somebody to kind of help us you know and really believe in what we're about to do because it's 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 a difficult and a very challenging endeavor to even begin to start a film festival yeah there's just so many moving parts you know it's not it's not just exhibiting but it's also engaging the community it's also uh, uh getting blessings from the the senior leaders of our community of different industries um and and, and we wanted to we wanted to make sure that we participate in all dialogue you know uh, dialogue in universities dialogue in high schools dialogue in uh, artists uh, dialogue filmmakers dialogue dialogue with community leaders nonprofits so we wanted to be kind of kind of in tune you know with with that and we learned so much because of that so we didn't start the San Diego Filipino Film Festival we started exploring that idea by showing a single film by showing a couple of films by talking to the audience learning from what they their experience and what they have to say so we've learned so much from that and when we when we think that we are at the right time and the right sort of a a, a moment mm-hmm. to start we ask the board because we have a we have a, a, a board members we ask them if it's okay we're going to start the film festival now and they they gave it they gave us the blessings and and also the and also the community they gave us the blessing and and so that's when we we decided we're going to do it it's going to be a difficult challenging it's still difficult now <laughs> it's still challenging now but it, we we are just driven because we've seen filmmakers filmmakers like you you know and cross generational filmmakers and that and also the community engaging the community telling us that oh the film that that i just watched it resonated to me because it reminded me of my mother or reminded me of my son or reminded me of my friend that i miss or my father who passed away you know all those things and those things are those things are priceless man those are those are our drivers those are our drivers and so no matter how difficult it is no matter how challenging it is we we yeah we we put together the San Diego Filipino Film Festival and also we are we are fortunate and grateful because our community started believing and our community started investing you know not only by investing in 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 the film festival but also investing their time you know and bringing people as well you know uh and at the same time we have an amazing amazing a uh, a uh, uh, team of volunteers that are not only filmmakers but they're also very intentional and and uh mindful of what we're trying to do and build you know and and that's something that's really 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 wonderful so yeah so yeah man <laughs> so now we're here <laughs> yes Now we're here and we're going to have all these amazing filmmakers on board and I'm super excited to be watching a lot of those films because I I think that you mentioned it uh very well that um you know we definitely do um need a lot of representation because there's so much talent in the Filipino community Filipino filmmakers Filipino artistry and uh, I wanted to ask um you know given that last year was such a great event and it was very successful what are you looking forward to the most in this year's festival Oh my god well first of all um you know we we wanted our our priority is always our priority is always to honor the filmmakers that's that's our priority we the filmmakers are our heroes are our heroes you know 
um, not only at San Diego Filipino Film Festival, but our heroes for our society because they're the ones that are tirelessly really absorbing things and interpreting it so that somehow we we get to learn from that interpretation you know and then and then mold it into a visual language into cinema and that's something that i i'm truly truly excited about that's ex- that's truly uh, uh, sort of the core of why we're doing this in the first place and then and then you make the meat make them meet in the middle the the the, the filmmakers the artists and the community yes. and that's something that we we want to kind of really mesh and gel you know and it, it it's it's working i i, I want the community to kind of remember and really really talk to the filmmakers and and know them and understand them and so i want also the filmmakers to know that you know the the community that they're that have been touched by the films they make are mm-hmm. are right there right there and they have they have something to to tell the filmmaker so that's something that we're excited about and that that has never changed from the our first year film festival up to now we are not going to change that it's just mm-hmm. the love the love is just going to grow man the love is going to grow that's basically it and then um we started nervously the first film festival it was it was uh after covid <laughs> yeah it was after covid uh, you know am i die was that made us nervous because we weren't sure if we were right we were not sure if we were right we just had covid nobody's going to the cinemas i don't even know who's going to the cinemas right that's the first year we had about 40 films from the get go and that's the first year and i was like oh my god compared to four films and an international film festival or two films we have 40 and so wow and we celebrated we celebrated of course with masks sometimes <laughs> but we we celebrated nevertheless um uh it's very it's a luxury to kind of hug people so there's a lot of fist bumps, you know? Yeah, fist yeah. bumps and everything. And then the second year, last year, oh my God. It was, it was talk about talk about learning from from that. That was insane. We had 70 films. I mean, it's crazy. And so t- this year we have 103 films. Wow. And so yeah. Uh, yeah, 63 uh, official uh, in person. You know, um, and and forty uh, uh, virtual screening, and every film has its own identity. Every film is unique, and and it's beautiful, man. And so we are not changing that. Um, what we'll probably end up changing, not changing, but expanding over time, are our programming. We have additional programming that we are going to put in within the festival, you know, that it's going to be rich. That, you know, you really, because Am I and I, we're fortunate enough to travel important film festivals like France in France, in, in Busan, in Korea, Busan International Film, the, the largest in, in the world, which is the Cinemalaya in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. So we've, we've learned from all those, you know, uh, uh, film festivals. And Sometimes, am I die as filmmakers? You know, we have our film, we have our film in the festival, and and we actually stay from the beginning to end, the duration of the film festival, because it's it's it becomes a a lifestyle. It's a, it's in, intoxicatingly addicting, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying to learn yeah. from all from all diverse stories. Because they're all unique, yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. And, 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 and of course, and I kept telling this when I go to universities to present the San Diego Filipino Film Festival, is that it's very rare that you watch a film, you pay, you sit down, you get your popcorn, the film is finished, you got hit, and you have absorbed everything, and you have your own interpretation, 
but there's no director to talk to. <laughs> there's no creative that have worked in in the film that you want to talk to. So it's a it's an added value. That's cinema culture. That is an added value in 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 what we do in the presentation of films. And so, yeah, I mean, I especially if there are films with a Q and A. Oh, we're we're always excited about that. So because of that, we want to, you know, eventually it's small steps, but we want to increase our programming within the festival. And that's something that uh, we are really, really driven to to kind of work, you know, uh, in, in, into into making that uh, a possibility. So right now we have the visions and voices. We've done that uh, last year. Now we're still last year we did the visions and voices in a small, in a in not small. It's a big conference room. This year we're having it in an auditorium. Mm. yeah <laughs> wow yeah so you know and and so on and so forth and so we wanted you know la and san diego they're sister cities you know they are yeah. so am i die if we're free and we don't have anything to do here in san diego we venture to go to, to and participate to la events and film festivals yes. and yeah and so I think we, as a community of artists, as a community of, of uh, people that are really interested in growing, I think, uh, I think uh, it's important to continue to learn from each other. And cinema is, is, cinema is, the, is the way. I mean, you know, cinema is the way. Because, you, you know, you, aside from traveling with, with, with the film and going, and going to places that you probably never never probably go to you will see it in the film and you travel with it and then and then you learn from the the dialogue that ensues you know the the film screening mm -hmm. you know and that's something that's uh very important very important so yeah so i don't think we're going to change a lot we're just going to expand eventually but we have you know we have uh, this year, for the first time, we have an awards night. Yeah, it's awards night with an open bar. <laughs> Woo! And, yeah, and we have a we have an amazing DJ. We have an amazing DJ collage. Yeah, you know, so he's doing rounds in 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 in, in different music uh, uh, festivals here, and also uh, in in downtown and underground clubs. But at the same time, we are we are going to enjoy the performance of. Of uh, um, the Sibs, L A J, the Basco, the Basco siblings, yes, yeah. So yeah, and so we're going to have dancing. We're going to have food. We're going to have the awards night. Yeah. Yes. yes. Th yeah. That seems very exciting. And for people who want to go to the awards night, please, please attend to that one. I'll be there. I'll meet you. I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be very exciting. And I want to go off of what you said um, about the growth that has been happening in the San Diego Filipino Film Festival and also the amount of films that, you know, were submitted like from like you said the pandemic, how it how how many films there were like during the first year up until now like over 100, right? Like 100 amazing Filipino films that you mentioned that are unique in itself. Like each one of those films have their own identity, right? So I'm more than excited to be witnessing like more of those this year and I'm also looking forward to meeting some of these filmmakers too and hopefully as, as much as possible because i remember going last year and i have i've made like connections already and then there there's some of them are people i consider friends for life so yeah. um very very amazing too to have all these creatives together and to connect and everything and i'm very happy and content to be seeing I guess the Filipino community coming together and just celebrating the culture through art and film. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. And I also wanted to ask like in terms of representation, right? Um, what makes the San Diego Filipino film festival unique 
because, mm. you know, given that there's a lot of uh, film festivals out there, uh, what makes uh, San Diego Filipino Film Festival unique? Yeah, another beautiful question, man. Another beautiful question. Where at, at the core, at the core of what we do, like what, what I said, at the core of what we do uh, is a respect, you know, and, and a huge honor for us to be celebrating the films of the of the global Filipino of the global uh, stories Filipino stories from uh, filmmakers of Filipino descent, and and that is at the core of what we do, but also at the core of what we do is is providing our community, providing our community with a pride and inspiration to to continually uh, 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 be be educated and 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 learn from from the the stories that we have and the storytellers that are amazing that are filipino you know and so and and then we bring that to the diverse community so that we can continue to share our our history our culture our identity yes. and and that's something at the core of what we do is is very important and now in order for us to be unique, you know, and, and we're not trying to be unique, but we want to maintain, we want to maintain sort of what we've learned as a Filipino is, is growing up, up to now is our hospitality, our warmth, and, and we want to provide that. And that's something that is unique. We want to provide that to our, uh, diverse audiences we are all inclusive uh and and we're always we're always uh asking our audience our community if we if there's anything else we can do for you yeah. just just let us know and that's something that i think uh, we we want to promote in our film festival and and if that makes us unique then yeah that i think is 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 beautiful that is beautiful yeah and we 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 are proud of that yes and so am i and uh thank you so much for sharing that um can you highlight some of the themes and messages that are i guess um shown in this festival i remember seeing scenes from home and also outside the box etc like talk a little bit about those um section of films and what it means for the the festival as well mm. you know that's a very good question and the best person to answer that but I, I i will try to answer that uh you know and articulate the answer but the best person to answer is the programming director and co-founder emma francisco but unfortunately she's not here so uh and i think she will forgive me if I make mistakes, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> and then we'll have a, another uh, podcast for that one. There you go. Another yeah. There podcast. you go, man. Yeah. So, okay. So Emma is, is, is the head, uh, is the programming director. And so the idea of putting the films in different categories and not, and not, uh, uh, sort of classifying them uh, uh, in terms of genre and format is because we wanted we wanted the audience to come in, watch a film that you're interested to watch because you're dying to watch this film, right? And it's a narrative, you know? And then the following film is a documentary. You're not ready for a documentary, but now you have a documentary to watch. And you go, whoa. Oh, wow, that is a different experience, but but it it touched me. So that's something that's unique. And then boom, the next the next uh, film, the next film is animation, and then it takes you on a different path. Or you are you're interested in animation, but before we show you the animation in that category, you know, you get to watch a documentary, and that documentary might resonate with you because that is your personal story you know saying that is your mo mom's story or you know saying so that is something that you know how we decided to do it you know now last year 
last year, the theme for, for last year, and we always, we don't put the theme out in public. We don't publicize it. It's always sort of a, a theme for us, for us, for the core volunteers, for the, you know, for the, the San Diego Filipino cinema organization. So the theme last year was war, about war. It's about peace. What have we learned from history? You know, how come we're repeating it again? And what is the, what is the, what do you call that? The, the, the importance of war. You know, that, that is the subliminal theme. So everywhere you can see it, you can feel it, you know, in the discussions and everything. So to share our theme, we're not publicly saying it, but, you know, since you ask, it's about the environment. It's about what we're experiencing now. You cannot ignore. Yeah. You need to absorb that and interpret that and understand that if we don't do anything about it, all of us, no one is excluded. We will perish, man. We will, per we will end. We will end. And the trajectory of the cat cat catastrophic trajectory we are in now is pointing in that direction. Mm -hmm. And so we need, we need to discuss reversal of that. We need to really, yeah. So, yeah. And, and somebody, somebody in the, somebody in the gala asked me, took me aside and said, Hey Benito. So how can, when you, when I watch the films for this year, how am I, how are you going to talk about climate? And I, and I told, and I told the, the, the attendee of the gala, I said, we don't have to talk about climate. I just need to show you environment. And when I see you, when I show you that I can stand in the middle of a, 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 the road and it's snowing, it reminds you of snow. It reminds you of how you feel, you know, in the center of snowy field, you know, and so on and so forth. So that, it's a discussion of environment, how you take it and how you interpret that and how it initiates you to go into a dialogue. You know, yeah. that is the beginning. That is the beginning. So, yeah. So our themes are, yeah, are always changing. We're always very thoughtful, very thoughtful of those things. So, Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's absolutely beautiful, Benito. And I really appreciate that too, like seeing all those sections and themes um, in the festival instead of saying like, oh, this is these are the narrative shores, these are um, the features, etc. Because you know, now I'm going to expect like what kind of like you mentioned, like feeling I'm going to have like once I get into that theater, right? So that's such an amazing idea and I can't wait to be watching all of those. And um, it looks like we're almost out of time, but I wanted to ask too that for for people who, you know, who are anticipating this festival, uh, who want to watch all these films and who are excited to support Filipino cinema, what would you say to those people? Oh my God. Well, gr grab your pen, write down, <laughs> go, go to sdfff.org. Take a look at all the information of the films that you're about to see. Take a look at the schedule, but don't waste too much time because you might run out of tickets. Like we sold out on the opening and the closing and then really understand the filmmaker who's made a film. And 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 kind of kind of understand where that filmmaker is coming from, and then kind of understand the film and and let that film challenge you, and say, oh, okay, this film I don't understand, but it's challenging me to kind of be curious, you know, and then and then if you take a look at all the filmmakers and all the stories, be proud because you're Filipino, Filipino American. Yes. And wherever the stories come, you know, came from, it came from our 
you know, uh, for Filipino descent, you know, and and I, I I would I would say go watch all the short films because when you watch a sort of a category of short film, it's like watching a feature film because it will take you to an undulating roller coaster ride because the animation is there, the music video is there. The docu is there. The narrative is there, you know, mm-hmm. and it takes you in so many different, different areas. And then you go, Oh my God, that was like a feature film of different emotions, you know? So that's what it is. So that's, you need, you, Oh my God, that's amazing. Now, now if you want to watch feature films, now you're going to see what makes this filmmaker different from this filmmaker. Yeah. You know, why is this filmmaker shooting a film? in a monotone coloring, you know? Why is this fi- filmmaker slow in terms of pacing? Why is this filmmaker uh, uh, taking us on a, on a psychological ride to, and, then, and then backing, backing it up and, and now reversing, reversing what we've learned? And so, I, I mean, it's, oh my God, it's, it's 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 an adventure. I, I I would watch all films. I would watch all films. I I I will say to the audience or to the to the listeners, go buy a fast pass. Go buy a, so that that way you are guaranteed that you will get into a to a film. You know, I I think I mentioned. I don't know if I mentioned uh, in, in in this year's gala, but. I mentioned in one of my talks in universities that the 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 beautiful purveyors purveyors of cinema culture are artists. They are the ones that uh, challenge us and it sends us on a on a journey, and it takes us on a on a on an interpretation of their own visual language, and and then we as the audience and community. We participate in becoming part of that cinema culture, you know, and that cinema culture is something that we're also trying to build in San Diego, you know, and it's the Filipino cinema culture because we participate and we go to mainstream uh, a cinema and we laugh and we buy popcorn and we share our experience. But this time you go to our very own, mm-hmm. to our very own. And that's something that is inspirational. It's meaningful. It's meaningful. Uh, it's, 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 it, there's so much pride in it, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, go and go and, and be curious. Oh, we have, we have amazing films and, and talk to the filmmakers, you know, talk exactly. to the filmmakers. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes, talk to them too and not just watch. And I got to say, yeah, I'm super excited to be seeing all these films, like I mentioned before. Um, but also, like like you mentioned about the uniqueness of all these films. Why does one um, feel different than the other film, etc.? Like what kind of styles are being generated from all these like artists' brains, right? So, yeah, um, like Benito mentioned, if you don't have a ticket yet, get as many as you can or get the day pass or get the fest pass because yeah, that's going to be much of a value right mm-hmm. so so that's amazing um benito i'm super excited for the festival thank you so much for you know explaining all those things and for allowing our audience to listen to your stories and be excited about san diego filipino film festival as well i only have a couple of questions left and uh, as you know, um, the f- podcast is also about giving advice to our listeners. So what advice would you give for aspiring filmmakers, especially for the fil- from the Filipino community, um, even if they're just starting out? Oh, uh, continue with what you're doing. You're, if, you, if you have the heart you know, of a filmmaker, um, it will probably never leave you. It will not. It will take you, you will suffer because it's not an easy, it's not an easy journey, yeah. you know, 
But if you are sincere, uh, your destiny will find you. If you are sincere. But if you're there just because you wanted your name on the board, you might fail. So that's that's a true test of of how sincere you are. I mean, you will never you will never always get a yes green light. Yes, we're green lighted. No, you might get more rejections than being green lighted, but that is something that uh, uh, will not only build your character, but that is something that you can kind of evaluate and assess, you know, and learn and learn from. Uh, that's something that you know, yeah. And then, and then, um, I think, I think, if you're a beginning, and this is coming from my personal experience, if you're a beginning filmmaker of Filipino descent, especially Filipino descent, uh, I, I'm honored to be in your company. I am inspired by you. I'm proud of you, but I also want to tell you that if you are going to make a short film or even a mid-length film or maybe a first feature film put a lot of thought in what you're about to do and make sure that you are not only talking to your friends and your family but you're talking to the global audience that might not know us might not know you might not might not know our story but it will resonate to because if you do that then your film will be remembered. And you have probably, if that will be the first and last film, you, you're, you've created a film that will be truly immortal. You know, and that's something that, uh, as a beginning filmmaker, something that you need to, to kind of set as a goal. Yeah, set as a goal. Don't, don't make a film just because you needed to make a film. No, don't do that. Or you needed to, or you're challenged by your peers. No. A story will talk to you. And if you pay attention to that story and you're very mindful and thoughtful of how you're going to mount it, be, be, do it with all sincerity and, and you will have a beautiful film. Yeah. Benito, you just encouraged me to write a film right now. So <laughs> that's absolutely amazing. And uh, final question is, where do you think Filipino representation in the arts will go from here, given that there's the San Diego Filipino Film Festival that's rising over the years? And there's also um, maybe a few ones in L.A. too, like the Film I'm Creative is about to launch and also uh, Las Vegas Filipino, Long Beach, etc., I, I get the sense that there's a lot of uh, Filipino representation happening in the arts more often. So I guess I wanted to ask you, like, where do you see us going in the near or distant future? I think I think we th this is one of the most exciting times, you know, that we have right now, because like I mentioned before, we are done with being invisible. We've already given so much and com contributed so much in so many different industries, not only in film and, and arts and culture, but we have, we have done so much in different industries, healthcare, you know, uh, uh, law, uh, uh, government, you know, but we're always, we're always invisible, but we never claim that right, you know, and we never really, we never, we're very humble people. So now, the film festival is kind of shining a big light to, you know, so that that light should, should bounce beyond our community and it can bounce to other communities and say, we will always, we will always learn from each other. And the more we know each other, the more we will not hate each other. You know what I'm saying? And yes. empathy will grow. And so, Aside from creating visibility, you know, a very important, you know, a visibility through stories and arts and culture and cinema, uh, we are also kind of educating one another and say, you've seen me, but you can talk to me. I'm not going to bite. 
I, you have stories. I'm willing to listen, but I too have stories. So instead of pushing me on the ground, you might want to sit down with me and understand where I came from. And so we can do that. If we can do that with our own community and other, other diverse communities can do that with our community, we can also do that to other co- communities and we can sit down and we can together learn. Now, with film festival, yeah, Filipino film festivals sprouting all over the place, it is really empowering. It is really insp- inspiring. And we hope to connect and somehow be connecting the dots. And together we, we have, you know, invisible bridges, you know, and, and yeah, and we share and we participate. We wanted to bring the San Diego community to the LA Film Festival, to the Film and Creative Film Festival. We want to engage, you know, our community to go there. So, and then in Vegas, you know, and then in, in Long Beach. So in that way, we get to, we might become a, a, an association of Filipino film festivals in the US. And that's not bad, right? What if we can, if we can do that, we can eventually create a very strong market that we can trust, you know. And if we have a film that we need funding, that's a community that can fund it, you know. And if we have a film to celebrate, that's the community that will consume and celebrate that film. So, yeah. So I think I think it's it's a beautiful thing. It's a really beautiful thing. Yeah. I think I think so too. I think it's a really beautiful thing, and it's also an opportunity for all of us to be united, right? Um, given that you know division is caused by lack of understanding, I think that all of these um, either festivals or like filmmakers showing up and like showcasing their projects is an opportunity to to really show the beauty of the Filipino culture. And also, you know, I'm super excited to see all of us, you know, helping each other out and connecting with one another and, you know, just having that support, having that support system. So Benito, like you being the executive director of San Diego Filipino Film Festival, um, it's really an honor having you in this podcast. And it's it's been such an amazing episode. And I can't wait for people to watch the films from... October 3rd to 8th. Uh, at least that's what the schedule is. And um, hopefully go to the awards night too. So, you know, it'll be an opportunity for all of us to connect and also hang out and, uh, you know, just witness all these amazing talents and all these amazing projects and films. So Benito, thank you so much. I just have a few more um, people you want to shout out uh, in this podcast uh, since um, this is a platform where, you know, you can promote as well as amplify people. So anyone you want to shout out? Well, the shout out that I, I want to do is first and foremost, uh, Emma Francisco. Yeah. It's uh, my amazing film producing uh, partner, uh, my wife, and also an amazing programming director and co-founder of San Diego Filipino cinema. Uh, she's done an amazing job and, and I've seen her work sleepless nights, man, sleepless nights. And and, and also our team of volunteers here in, in San Diego and also in the Philippines that are, that are, you know, always ready and always dedicated and passionate and inspired uh, 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 and, and really intentional in the work they do. And so that's something that uh, I want to I wanna do a shout out. And of course, uh, all, the, all the global Filipino filmmakers, you know. Yeah, we want we want to we want to do a shout out to, to all of them, you know. We and and of course, Howling Entertainment. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 what else? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, that's it. And then all our our family and friends and community. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. And also for um, all your shout outs as well. And then lastly, um, how can our listeners stay connected with you? I know that you already mentioned your social media in the beginning of, of the, the podcast, but kindly, I guess, repeat it for people who um, need a reminder as well. And also the San Diego Filipino Film Festival, where can people uh, find the festival, etc.? 
Yeah. So the the film festival for schedule and tickets uh, and all information. So you go to sdffffs.org and you, you will see you will see everything there. Um, but if it's if it says sold out, uh, email us and let us know if you want to be on the waiting list. You know, in case somebody does not. Yeah. Anyway, so um, for if you want to get in touch with us, the best way if you have a Instagram, uh, my handle is b three n i t o Bautista b a u t i s t a, uh, and Emma is e m m a Francisco. And uh, for San Diego Filipino Cinema, it's SD Filipino Cinema. Yeah, that's uh, that's for IG. And you can DM us and 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 follow us, and and yeah, and yeah, it's that's 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 all. And if you see us on the road, just say hi. Yes, absolutely. Say hi to Benito. Um, yes, thank you so much, Benito, for being part of this podcast. I can't wait to promote this festival even more and to have all uh, listeners attend and also, you know, um, meet all these filmmakers, these talented filmmakers as well. So I just want to thank you again, Benito, for being a guest of The Howl. And uh, yeah, it's an honor to be with you today. Oh, the honor, the honor is mine and the pleasure is mine as well. Thank you for having me, Juan. Thank you. And yeah, yeah, keep listening, you know, to The Howl podcast.